I would like to point out that Don Jr. has been busted uh, cheating on Kimberly uh, Gorfoyle. Is that Gilfoyle, I think. Gilfoyle. And um, he's saying a lot of crazy stuff on the internet, and I want to play this clip. <laughs> Didn't exactly stop him. I have a feeling... We only got that information because thankfully Governor DeSantis of Florida opened up a parallel investigation, is not releasing the suspect to the feds where he'd probably disappear like, you know, Epstein himself, so to speak. So I'm glad that's happening. Okay, what is he talking about? He makes shit up just like his father. None of that makes any sense. Could you imagine going your entire life as being the junior version <laughs> of Donald Trump? I mean, I can't imagine the psychological and emotional impact that would have on someone. And I think there is a large body of evidence on the internet, on his Twitter feed, that has shown that that has really, really not behooved him to be a sane, rational person. And he now claimed, I have to sit down and talk to my five-year-old about uh, these attempts on my father's life. Mind you, when Nancy Pelosi's husband was uh, like home invasion and beaten up, Don Jr. celebrated this. That's Don Jr.'s dad constantly calls out to the fake news. And when I'm in power, I'm gonna do something with the fake news. He's gaslighting everybody and saying that the rhetoric from the left is what is causing this. But I want to remind you and the viewer and the listener that none of these suspects have been uh, trans people, mm -hmm. immigrants, um, women, they are all white men and they fail to address the largest problem here, the easiest layup of all layups. How can somebody with a criminal history access an AK-47? How does that happen in the United States of America? They don't want to address that. And so, like I said yesterday, we will just send our thoughts and prayers. That's but right. until then, what we want is massive gun reform in this country. And speaking of that, this year will be the first year that the Sandy Hook survivors are able to vote. The majority of them are voting for Kamala Harris, and they say that they're doing so because they want to cast a vote for their 26 schoolmates that can't vote. And I want to remind you of the details of this. In the United States of America, kindergartners and first graders had to pile into a closet on top of each other. And with a blink of an eye, a man came in with an assault weapon and mass massively murdered all of these little children. All they did that day was wake up and go to school in the United States of America. But Donald Trump and J.D. Vance and all the other crazies on that side want to say that it's the left wing's fault that this stuff's happening to Trump, yet they do nothing, not a thing about these kids getting shot in schools. They don't care. It's all smoke and mirrors. And they say they're the party of children. They're the party of family. They're not. Otherwise, when kids got shot in schools, you would see robust policy change to try to prevent that from happening because it wouldn't be that difficult, but they refuse to do it. And this brings me to why we're here in Pennsylvania on this reproductive freedom bus is the issue of abortion care and reproductive freedom. And the right wants to say that physicians and hospitals and nurses are murdering children immediately after they're born, which is a complete and total lie. Um, while at the same time saying that school shootings are just a fact of life. And so let's just call it out. They're breathtaking hypocrites. They want to pander to the gun lobby because they value the billions and trillions of dollars in gun sales and ammo more than they do kids. And then when it comes to reproductive freedom, they value controlling women and controlling the electorate more than they do health care or freedom. It's total bullshit. And improving this, let me play for you what J.D. Vance has been saying uh, in the last couple of days. Now, the Supreme Court's decision, it was not only a victory for the Constitution, it was a victory, it was a testament to the result of tens of millions of pro-life Americans who never gave up on the cause of life. Now, we're united in our gratitude and our admiration for these devoted defenders of the unborn and for the judges, justices, 
especially President Trump, whose commitment to defending the law and the Constitution allowed this breakthrough after over 50 years of it not happening. Now, I stand here as the vice presidential nominee saying the Republican Party is proud to be the pro-life and the pro-family party. The victory lap about Donald Trump overturning Roe v. Wade and millions of women losing their rights and freedom. And then the part where he says the Republican Party is pro-life and pro-family. That is the biggest lie that they tell. They are not pro-life. When you do not act on gun legislation to prevent children in America from getting killed, you are the opposite of life. The pro-family stuff, let's look at the families they have. I'm, I don't care because I'm not a religious hypocrite, but Don Jr., who I started out with, has five kids, cheated on that wife with Kimberly. Now he's cheating on Kimberly. Donald Trump, you know, has had three wives, five different kids, allegedly, according to the internet. Now he's screwing that Laura Loomer. I don't care because I'm not a religious hypocrite, but I'm not the one campaigning on this. I'm campaigning with this administration for freedom for the right to live the way you want to live. I think when I think about Don Jr., he is repulsive, obviously. But what really gets me after this assassination attempt is the right trying to say the rhetoric comes from the Democrat. Just a real short clip down memory lane. We've got vermin. They call immigrants vermin. They want to deport people because they're poisoning the blood of America. These are all Hitler. This is exactly what was happening in Germany. They do not address the fact that J.D. Vance admitted that he lied about Haitian immigrants that are in Springfield, Ohio, legally. Yet they're talking about Donald Trump, who the Secret Service thwarted that assassination attempt. And if I if memory serves, both of those people that tried to assassinate Donald Trump we're Republicans because they voted in primaries for the Republican well, Party. And let's not forget the language that led to January 6th. Right. I mean, come on. I mean, that's I'm just like, shut up with acting like we're the reason that you've created the cesspool of angry, rageaholic white people. That's your deal. Right. Those are your people o over here we, where you talk about America is being taken over by all these immigrants eating dogs and cats. We're just like you people are crazy and we're going to make sure that you don't have power. The rhetoric on their side and the gaslighting can only be compared with the Nazis because Absolutely. this is a play out of their playbook. All right, let's listen to another clip from J.D. Vance on abortion. And, and let's just be honest here that on every single policy issue over the last three and a half years, Kamala Harris was a failure. And on every single one of these policy issues from 2017 to 2021, Donald Trump was a raging success. Donald Trump, what he's saying here is the policy issues from 2017 to 2021, those policy issues were a raging success. He tries to attribute those to Donald Trump. And I will remind you, the viewer and the listener, Donald Trump was just hosting his little white trash racist rallies right. during that time period and had zero power, packed his toys up from the White House and left and couldn't go to the inauguration because he's such a damn titty baby. It, 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 it's Donald Trump a raging success in 2017 to 2021. This is what they try to do. They try to claim these successes of the Biden-Harris administration. Number one, insulin at $35. There is a clip where Donald Trump says, I did that. Oh, yes. And it's like, no, you actually did not do that. He thinks he passed the infrastructure. This is a man right. who's delusional, surrounded by obsequious sycophants that kiss his ass nonstop. They are cosplaying being alpha males. And right. this is the biggest cast of delusional uh people that have a lot of inner child issues that are manifesting <laughs> on the national stage right now, like all of these people need to be in intensive psychotherapy. Absolutely. I'm, I'm not trying to be hyperbolic. No. It's clear to me that J.D. Vance is broken. Somebody yeah. hurt him. Somebody hurt him. There's no question somebody hurt Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. And there's no question that being told your entire life that you're the junior version of Donald John Trump Sr. would really fuck you up. It totally would. Yeah. Here's what I am so sick of already, and we've got 48 days before the election, that 
Donald Trump keeps talking about migrants coming into our country and he's going to fix the border. He was president from 2016 to 2020. His big idea to, pre to prevent immigration was a wall that his buddy Steve Bannon stole all the money for. Mexico never was going to pay for it. A physical barrier is never going to keep people out. So if he's so good at immigration, why didn't he do it in the four years that he was president? He doesn't want immigration to be fixed. What he wants is a unifying enemy for everyone to hate so that he can advance an authoritarian agenda. And the more uh, immigration is spoken about, all the white people get scared right. and they feel like all of these terrible things are going to happen, even though a lot of these people don't live anywhere near a border and the immigrants in their community that are there legally are hard workers contributing to the community. And they know this, but there's something about this pull to racist rhetoric and to hateful rhetoric that is a problem that our country is going to have to continue to try to reconcile the remnants of our racist history still persist on and now it's you know they try they trot out the immigrant immigrant and then they'll trot out the trans issue both of these issues are are First of all, the trans issue is something that is 1% of the mm -hmm. population. And if it makes you feel like a tough guy to pick on a trans person, again, go to psychotherapy. Right. Seriously, mind your own business. And on the immigration issue, we are a history, we are a country rich in history of immigration. And right now the crossings are at the lowest they've been because of biden's executive order but he wants it to be chaotic because he wants everybody to hate the same shit that he hates so that he can be a little baby dictator that's right. what he wants i just want to leave everybody with this i saw a tweet that um moses mike johnson the speaker uh. of the house was in an extended prayer meeting <laughs> with donald trump at mar-a-lago <laughs> and this is this is exactly what the Republican Party gives you. Uh, a man named Mike Johnson, who is a nut, believes in magical thinking, thinks that Moses thinks that he's Moses. God told him you're Moses. That's why you're going to be the Speaker of the House. This is an unhinged lunatic that then tells people when he leaves Mar-a-Lago that he's been in an extended prayer session with Donald Trump. Shut up. Uh, sit down and shut the fuck up. I mean, I have had it. It's so nauseating. It's beyond nauseating. It's gross. And the thing is, Mike Johnson is gross for so many reasons. But why don't you get back to Washington, D.C. and pass a budget to keep the government open instead of running down with your tail between your legs to see Donald Trump? Because you don't give a shit about governing. I'll tell you what. I think all of these grown ass men that just run down, race down. I'm looking at McCarthy, yeah. Lindsey Graham, all the morons that just race down to Mar-a-Lago to kiss his ring is the most pathetic display of masculinity I have ever seen in my life to think I am Donald Trump's bitch. Right. And that's but what at they the are. same time, they think they're alpha males. It's so ridiculous and immature. They're all just so ineffective, so incompetent, and they just fit right together with Donald Trump and all his incompetency. That's right. Follow along on social media. We are going to be in Pennsylvania the remainder of the day, heading towards Scranton. Um, thank you for listening. Make sure you subscribe everywhere, and we will see you guys tomorrow. It's so. <laughs>